Section 732, this is how Maxwell fixed up Ampere's law. So remember we just had this problem that the divergence of the curl of V was definitely not zero. Um, and we can introduce a new term into the curl of B so that when you take the divergence of it, you do get zero. So something to oppose this divergence. And um, well, let's calculate what the divergence of J is. Uh, well, the J is just the um, change in charge density at a point. And we know that the charge density is equal to the divergence of E. Um, charge density times the divergence of E. And so we can take this divergence outside, and so we get minus the divergence dot epsilon naught, the change in the E field. And going back to our loop um, that we drew for this this capacitor, indeed, as you're running a current through this, the electric field is changing in between those two plates. Okay, so already this looks like good news. This looks like we're going to get somewhere here. Okay, so that's what the divergence of J gives us. So let's introduce a new term, new term that exactly opposes opposes that when we take the divergence. So we had the curl of B is equal to mu naught J vector, and when we take the divergence of this, we want everything to be zero. So we have to introduce plus mu naught epsilon naught the change in the E vector over time. Okay, So this is our new Ampere's law. This is the patch to Ampere's law that makes it so that the divergence of the curl of B is always equal to zero. Okay, And the reason why, again, is the divergence of this is equal to negative the divergence of that. Okay. So um, now Maxwell, he had a different reason to introduce this term. He was thinking in terms of ether and stuff like that. Um, it was a great theoretical crutch to get us to where we are, but it turns out that that uh, the ether, as we can find out through experiments, that it doesn't exist. So um, the other interesting thing is when we patch up our equations to include that new term. Let me kind of just paste this up there. Do 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 do. do. So we're going to cover up there. Notice that we had the curl of E is equal to a change in the magnetic field. Now we have the curl of B is equal to a change in the electric field. It's very curious. Um, the other interesting thing is that why would they have rock solid faith in Ampere's law right here when this extra term was hanging around? The answer was it's actually really difficult to get a significant change in electric field, significant enough that you detect it compared to any current flowing around. Indeed, only when you start dealing with magnetic waves, um, electromagnetic waves, what we call light, um, do you see significance in, in this uh, appearing. So, only when you have a rapidly changing electric field do you see this change in the magnetic field or the curl of the magnetic field. Anyway, all right. Um, this term, this dude, is called the displacement current. It's a bad name. JD is equal to epsilon naught, the curl, I'm sorry, the, the time derivative of the T field. This is displacement current. Okay? Um, I like to think of it as this is the, this is basically like just like a changing magnetic field um, gives you. Uh, a current of sorts that generates an electric field that's curly. This is a change in electric field. There's really no substantial difference between this and that. They really do behave. So it, when you have a rapidly changing magnetic field, it feels like a current. Okay. So anyway, um, so in our example with the capacitor plates, let's go back to our our odd loop here. Let's bring the plates close together so that we, we have a uniform magnetic uh, uniform electric field in between. So uh, the electric field between the plates is going to be 1 over epsilon naught sigma, the charge density. I'm sorry, let's put a box on this equation. And um, that is going to be equal to, 
1 over epsilon naught, the total charge divided by the area of, the of one of the plates. Okay, so the change in the plates, change in the electric field between the plates, is going to be 1 over epsilon naught A, the area of the plates, and then you have the change in the charge on the plate over time, and so that's just the current. Okay? And so now we can calculate um, Ampere's law in integral form is equal to the total charge enclosed of your Amperean surface, whichever one you choose, plus mu naught epsilon naught times the integral dot dA. So the flux, the changing, the, 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 the change in electric flux through the Amperean surface. Okay, so that's the integral form of Ampere's law now, of the extended Ampere's law with Maxwell's correction. So, so in this case, for this uh, this this uh, this problem that we saw earlier, I'm just kind of draw it up here, kind of help you see everything put together. Scroll down, no, to the right, to the right. There you can see it now. Okay. So if we choose the Ampere surface that intersects with that current, then only this term survives. But if we choose this Ampere surface over here, then this term survives. And so we have to calculate the change in electric flux. Okay, so it depends on which surface we use, which term survives. Some cases you might have some odd situations where you have both a current and a changing electric field. So that is how Maxwell fixed up Ampere's law. And this is exciting. Now we have really good symmetry working between both um, uh, both the electric field and the magnetic field. They really are looking like mirror images of each other. So thanks for your time. Bye.